So I am speaking to you about um, some new assessment um, data visualizations that you will see this fall. These new dashboards will include KPREP, ACT, and KSA scores. Filters will allow you to see both your currently enrolled students, even if they did not take the exam in your school, as well as your past enrolled students that may have taken the exam in your building but are no longer enrolled. Filters and student level of views will enable you to easily see targeted specific grade levels, student groups, and subject areas. This will be done in two phases. The first phase will be available in August. We're thinking mid-August mid most likely, and we'll have three years of K-PREP and ACT data. The second phase will be available in October and we'll have the 2021 KSA scores. So this is the basic summary view by district, grade level, school, and subject. You can continue to filter by test, test year, current grade, test grade, subject, race, ethnicity, and student group. As I said before, we will have up to three years of K-PREP data available. However, we won't have the KSA scores until early fall of 2022. So we have filters for days. You can really dig into the data to pull out small subgroups to, by using multiple filters at once. However, only one subject can be shown at a time. Notice there is a no score group. This will allow schools to see that some of their students may have not tested in the selected test. Summary views are helpful for high level analysis. However, what if I wanted to download the data itself? So there are a couple ways to download summary data. The first way is to simply click on the download tab up in the right hand corner um, and choose the cross tab file format. The cross tab option will give you the choice of how you want to view the data. I have chosen in this example, the district option. The cross tab option will only give you a summary view on the summary dashboard, but it is also cleaner and nice to use for presentations or reporting. Okay. So let's say I want to see more than summary data. I could also download the data option. The data option allows you to get summary as well as detailed data. So choose the full detail option to see the detail. Full data, full data will allow you to see the demographic data as well as the student information. However, there is a better way to see basic student level data by using the state assessments by student view. It shows a list of each student by name and SSID with their individual score. The line shows how close the student was to the proficiency benchmark for the grade and subject of the identified test. You can also download this data by crosstab or data download to get details in Excel. All right, our next one is ACT scores, college readiness. ACT scores can be seen on both summary and student level views, just like the KPREP dashboard shown earlier. This view is identifying students that have met or not met the CPE Kentucky Academic Readiness benchmark for the ACT. They will, not, they will be identified as college ready or not college ready. Student group, grade school, Grade, school, and subject filters can be used to see smaller subsets. Detailed student information can also be downloaded the same way as the KPREP data. Again, same type of student view here for the ACT data. Um, the line on the graph shows how close each student was to the CPE benchmark for that subject. Again, you can only see one subject at a time. 
The test year and test grade filters will enable you to see students enrolled in your school during that time. Data can be filtered by student group, test grade, test year, school, subject, and race. You can also download the data to see demographic information as shown before in the KPREP views. All right, so as I said before, this is two phases. So that is all about the first phase. The second phase is more about the KSA data. So we're still working on these. They might look a little bit different when we actually publish. Um, the one you're looking at right now is called the demographic analysis. It will be used again just for KSA only. Um, it will enable you to compare up to two years and two demographic groups or student groups at once. Each bubble is also a filter and it can be easily downloaded to see the detailed information. All right. Uh, this view is like the KPREP summary views, except this allows you to compare multiple years. However, since we only have one year of KSA data for so far, this will only show 2021-22 um, data until next fall when the 22-23 scores come out. All right, and the last one is a multi-year student profile view. Schools will be able to pull up one student at a time to see a student's KSA scores for multiple years and subjects on one page. Again, this is only available for KSA, but as you can see, I like the fact that it shows not just the multiple years, but it shows the subjects as well. Okay, and I see a question on here. What program will these be on? This is on the CASES data visualization um, workbook. So um, the, the, on the screen, um, for more information, if you want to know more about CASES data visualization, it's the same thing that Blake talked about earlier, uh, but this will be a brand new workbook in there. Does anybody else have any questions about data visualizations? We can talk about any of them. I, again, have some time to kill. I was, go ahead, Lisa. If I don't have access to the data visualizations, but I want it, how do, who's allowed to have it? How do I get it? That kind of stuff. Thank you, Lisa. Um, so anyone well there is not a limit who can have or access to the system it's up to the district on who who has access now when you get in there you have a lot of access to data so a lot of districts want to kind of make sure your whatever you're doing um, you need all of that information and um, how you can get access is you can contact your cases administrator to be asked to be in the um, user group for um, data visualization. Another question, as a guidance counselor, will I have access to this site? As a guidance counselor, you absolutely should have access to the site. You just have to talk to your cases administrator to make sure you're in that um, user group in campus. And Kim, if they have issues getting to the data this is, is there's a user guide, correct? That gives them tidbits as far as like making Absolutely. sure that the email address is correct. And I know when I was in the district, that was, you know, a very, very handy guide. Absolutely. On this cases data visualization web page that is on my slide, if you click on there, um, there's actually several things on there. There's a um, user guide that talks about how to actually get set up. So you, if you're maybe if your cases administrator doesn't know how to do it, if you give them access to that uh, web page and tell them to check this user guide out, it will actually tell you step by step how to do it. Um, it also talks about, like Jen said, different troubleshooting things that maybe your email is not the same, or you've recently changed your name, um, or you're using a password for something else. You have to make sure you use your um, Microsoft password and um, login. So a couple of things like that you just need to check to make sure 
Um, I thought and I saw Google another question popped up. Be, Go ahead. Is Google still the most preferred um, browser or does it work across all of the other browsers nowadays? You know, it really does work on everything. Um, I haven't had a problem using it on anything. Now, I will say if people haven't used it in a long time, let's say you know you have rights, but you haven't looked at it in six months, most likely the um, single sign-on connection that is used to connect your campus rights to Tableau is broken. So all you have to do is fix it is to go into your browser and your history and just delete your browser history so it will refresh and put you back on the sign in screen. I know that sounds like oh, turn your computer off, turn it on, that kind of thing, but it really does work. Are there any other questions for data visualization? We have four minutes. Kim, have you tried data visualization since you've started using multi-factor authentication? Um, how, is it the same kind of thing? You just do it once and mm -hmm. you know, whatever your district policy is as to how often you have to refresh your multi-factor authentication? Correct. Yes. You don't really have to change. You, you shouldn't have to. If you use it regularly, you shouldn't have to log in every time um, as long as it hasn't been a long time since you, you've logged into Tableau. I just knew KDE's new policy is it's going to expire every 30 days. So you, know, you have to do it every once in a while at least. So. And now as soon as I update my Microsoft um, um, password, it connects directly to Tableau. It doesn't ask for it again. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty smart that way. But again, if you have, if anybody here has questions, individual questions, you might be having trouble getting in, um, anything like that, please feel free to reach out to me, um, Kimberly Walters here at KDE. Is there a fast and easy way for a system admin to see who all they have with access to their data viz? That is a great question. Yes, if system admin, all they have to do is go into into Infinite Campus, uh, search by user groups, and search and find the data visualization group. And then they can look and see how many people they have assigned to that group. And, you know, it's also a good thing to go in there and periodically, if people have left or changed positions, to take them out of that group. And that's the same name throughout the state, right? Everybody's using Correct. Yes. the same name. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 